Hello friends, it's day 11 of the 12 days of Christmas nail designs and we have a special treat. I am actually doing my mom's nails. So this video is chock full of my removal, application, everything. So keep on watching if you want to see how we got this look. All right, so this video is gonna be a little bit longer. Um, I'm just removing the Swarovski crystals from my mom's old set. These nails are probably five, maybe six weeks. Um, her nails do grow pretty fast, but uh, the crystals held on pretty good. We only lost one, so that was awesome. But this is a longer video, so if you want, make sure you grab you know, a snack or a coffee or something to, to get you through it. So I am using the um, five-in-one bit from Apre. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use this just on the product. I'm just removing the gel polish and debulking a little bit. I don't put a ton of product on her natural nails when I do her overlays, so I don't have to do a ton of removal. I'm just getting the gel polish off. I like to leave a good bit of the base product down so that I don't damage her natural nail or overfile or anything. But this five in one bit is fine at the top. Um, and then it gets a little bit more coarse as it goes down. I believe this is the medium bit, but they have a coarse version. I think they have a fine version. It works really nicely. And right now my e-file is up pretty high. It's on about 22 RPMs, which allows me to get through the gel really quickly without having to use a lot of pressure. And that keeps me from building up any heat on her nails or having any friction or anything like that. So super easy. I, I know it looks a little bit rough because I've got this sped up, but I'm using a really, really light touch, virtually no pressure here. Once I get the majority of the gel polish off, I'm gonna switch out to a sanding band. This is a fine zebra band, and I'm just going in around the edges, and I'm using this to remove any of the excess gel color that might be left after uh, I use the five-in-one bit, and I'm gonna remove any lifting. So she doesn't have a ton of lifting. There's a couple of spots here and there down by the cuticle, um, but I'm just gonna go through and clean all of that up, and then we'll come back for some cuticle work. For this process, my um, my e-file is on about 5,000 RPMs, so it's on a five on my dial. I like to keep it nice and low. It just, it, for the sanding band, because it's got some grit to it, it doesn't need to be up all that high. So once I get that all cleaned up, I'm still with the sanding band and I'm just running over the new the new growth basically um, two times with my sanding band just to um, abraze the surface so that everything sticks really nicely. So we're just going to rough up the surface a little bit, not too much, um, and then I'll go in with a cuticle bit once I've pushed the cuticles back. So I'm taking a pusher and I'm just gently pushing her cuticles back, making sure that I get that nail fold off of the nail so that I can go in with my cuticle bit and get everything cleaned up from the nail plate. Now this cuticle bit, I have no clue where I got this from, truth be told, um, but I love it. Actually, I think it's from Enel Couture. Uh, I love it. It's really nice for, you know, it, because of the shape, I can lay it flat up against the nail and avoid sort of creating any sort of like overfiling or any sort of damage in the sidewalls or in the cuticle. So I like that it's able to lay pretty much parallel to the nail and just clean off all the, you know, remaining skin or anything that's grown onto the nail plate itself. So I'll use this bit in forward and then I'll also flip my, my e-file into reverse and go the other direction so that I make sure to get everything regardless of which way sort of the skin is lifting off of the nail plate. Now I'm taking this ball polishing bit. This one is from Willow Academy. 
um, which is a UK based brand, but it's their big polishing ball. And I'm just gonna take that and run it across her cuticle. So I'm not nipping her cuticle. I'm not gonna go in and cut anything, but um, this bit does allow me to sort of exfoliate off any of that dead skin that might have been grown and has now been lifted off of the nail plate. So I'm just gonna use this again in forward and reverse to make sure that we've got a nice smooth cuticle area without the potential for giving her hangnails or any sort of like um, cuts or any sort of abrasions on her cuticle area. All right, so once all of that's done, I'm just going in with a little bit of swipe on a manicure brush to get rid of all the dust. I'm wiping down away from the cuticle towards the free edge just to make sure that I don't push dust into her sidewalls or anything. Now it's time to file. Just gonna clean up this shape. Here you guys can see how nice my mom's natural nails are. They've grown really long. I mean, she always has some pretty good length, but these are this is long for her. Um, but she's been able to keep them because the overlay adds the strength she needs to protect her nails. So we did have one casualty on her thumb. Uh, so I'm gonna show you guys uh, an opre extension for that, but the rest of these I'm just going to file and shape up and make sure that they look nice before I apply my builder in a bottle. So I'm going to just take a lint-free wipe and once again wipe off all the dust so that I don't have any issues with them moving forward. I wipe the dust a lot. <laughs> I don't think you can do it too often in your process, but that's just my personal experience. So now I'm just getting my opre tip. I'm going to use the sculpted long square. Um, because it's the easiest and most similar in shape and size to what my mom grow, like how her nail grows. She does have a pretty decent C curve on her natural nails, so the sculpted ones are perfect for her. I'm just checking to make sure that it fits sidewall to sidewall. You don't want any um, space there, right? You don't want any gaps. And then I'm just gonna take that same willow polishing bit etch the inside, and then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Protein Bond from Young Nails and use that to prime the inside of the tip as well. Opre has their own primer, but I don't have it yet, so I've been using Protein Bond and I haven't had any problems. Um, I think Protein Bond is one of those products that works with any system, any brand. I haven't seen any issues using it with different companies or different brand of products, so I really enjoy that. And I also put a layer of protein bond on the natural nail as well. And then it's time for base coat. So I'm gonna use the gel bottles clear rubber base for this entire process. So I'm gonna put a layer of base coat down on the natural nail first, and then I will cure that, and then come back out to apply the opera tip again with the clear rubber base from the gel bottle ink. So taking that tip, I'm now going to put a little bit of clear rubber base onto the tip up to the area where the natural nail would stop. I like to do this because I feel like it allows the gel to flow uh, a little bit more seamlessly and I feel like it helps me avoid getting air bubbles, but of course everybody's process is a little bit different. And I can do a more in-depth opre video, but I'm just gonna pull some of the gel into the well there and um, flip it over and start at the cuticle and sort of rock it down over the nail, hold it in place, and then give it a flash cure.
And once I've got it on there, I'm just gonna give it to my mom to stick in the lamp to get a full cure on it. And once that's done, I'm gonna take it out and give it a buff over with my sanding band so that it's prepped and ready to go just like all the other nails and we're ready for art. It is longer than her other nails and it's more of a square. I gave her a little bit more of a tapered square on her natural nails. So I'm gonna cut it down a little bit and shape it up before we go to do any of our gel polish or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of protein bond to the rest of the natural nails, and then we'll go in for our builder in a bottle application. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a coat of base coat to every nail, cure that off, um, and then it'll be time for our builder gel. Now, I like to stir my builder gels because I find that they separate um, in the bottle. And so this little spatula is great for getting in there and just stirring it up. So I recommend that if you're finding you're having inconsistent color, if you're using a colored builder gel, just my preference. This is the builder in a bottle from the gel bottle ink in the color 019. I really like it for my mom and, and me both, right? Our hands are sort of the same color, um, but for our skin tone, it's a really nice natural looking pink. So I'm just gonna put down a slip layer, build it up just a little bit to make sure that it's nice and even and smooth. I'm not building her much of an apex or anything like that. Again, this is just an overlay just to add a little bit of strength to her natural nails, which are already long and strong. So keeping it really simple, just running my brush back and forth. On the next nail, you'll see me flip her hand upside down to allow that gel to sort of pool in the middle and run away from the side walls so that we get a nice even application without it running sort of all over her cuticle. But um, really quick, easy application. I'm not doing too much with it and I don't have to extend her nails, so this goes by pretty quickly. Once those are all done and cured, I'm gonna wipe off the sticky layer and give them a file and a buff just to make sure that my shape is nice and clean as well as the top is nice and smooth and I don't have any dips or lumps or bumps.
If you've made it this far and you're enjoying this content, make sure you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Make sure you're subscribed and turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next time I upload. Here, I'm just going in with some black gel polish. This black is from Dipped In Pretty and it does give really good opacity on the first coat. I'm gonna do one coat on my chrome nails and two coats for my black nails. So I'm just applying it to the lower three quarters of the nail. And then you'll see I have some black gel polish on my thumb there. I'm gonna use that to dip into and take a liner brush to get nice and clean cuticles. Colors like black and white, right, when they get, I mean all colors really, but those sort of um, abstract edge of the spectrum colors, when they get into the cuticle, it's really, really tough to clean that up. So I like to stop my brush just short of the cuticle, the brush from the bottle, and then go in with something a little bit finer where I have a little bit more control and can make sure that I get a nice, clean, even edge that I'm looking for. So those are painted and cured off. I'm gonna take a no wipe top coat and put that on the index finger. This is for my raw, sh my raw glitter sugar nail. So I'm taking a gold, a holographic gold glitter from Young Nails, I believe it's called Fortune. Um, and I'm just going to dump that into the uncured top coat. The non-wipe top coat is ideal for this because you don't have to worry about encapsulating it, top coating it, or having a sticky residue. Um, it dry, it cures and it's totally dry and you don't have to worry about any of that. So I'm just gonna coat it in the glitter, catch, it, catch the excess in my glitter tray, and then cure it off. Um, it's a good idea to do a double cure on your sugar nails because you want to make sure that the light penetrates through the glitter to cure the gel. So give it a good two minutes in your lamp and you should be all good to go. Once that comes out, I'm just going to dust off any excess. This is the duster brush from Magpie Beauty. It's a little bit of a stiffer brush, so it's gonna really get in there and shake loose any of those um, uncured pieces of gel. Same top coat, this is the top coat, the high gloss top coat from Medusa. I'm going to apply that to the ring finger on each nail, or I'm sorry, on each hand, <laughs> so that I can put my, my Magpie Chrome on it. So I, she wanted a gold chrome accent, gold chrome and black, so we're gonna go ahead and give her a full chrome nail because I mean, nothing beats like a chrome mirror shine at Christmas time. So this is the Elizabeth Dust from Magpie Beauty. I used this in one of my recent videos. I can't remember which one, but it's amazing. The, the shine is truly like a mirror finish. So I'm just gonna take an eyeshadow applicator, rub this all into the nail, make sure I get it in all the nooks and crannies. That black base coat really does allow the chrome to just shine super bright on top. You don't have to use black though. That's totally up to you. You can use whatever you color you want. I just find the chromes to perform the best on top of a black base. And I'm just gonna go ahead and top coat that right away, making sure to get edge to edge all the way to the cuticle and then capping the free edge as well. So this is a trick that I learned and I'm curious to see how it wears for my mom. I'm putting protein bond down on the free edge there and then I'm gonna do another layer of top coat. So this is a no wipe top coat and I'm hoping that this just allows the chrome to last for a good long while for her without chipping or having any sort of issues at the free edge of her nail. So I will report back to you guys the next chrome video that I do, how I liked this trick, how it held up for my mom sort of as she went through uh, a busy season where you're doing a lot of stuff with your hands. For the black nails on the middle finger, I'm going in with my Velveteen matte top coat from Luxa. This is my favorite matte top coat at the moment. I think it just gives that dry matte look, if that makes sense. I don't prefer a rubber matte top coat. I, I don't love the texture of that. I like it when it dries and it's like super matte. So the Luxa matte top coat is my favorite. Um, so I just went in and applied that. And now I'm going in with a fine liner brush and some no wipe top coat because these are going to be chromed out diamonds for the base of my Argyle print. 
So I'm just gonna draw out two diamonds, one stacked on top of the other vertically on the nail and fill them in with no wipe top coat and cure them. I cure them one at a time because I don't want them to pool or run into each other. So I draw one diamond, cure it, do the other hand, cure that, and then do the second diamond on each hand, cure it, and then chrome them both. When you're thinking about efficiency, right, and trying to get through your art and your designs, sometimes it's better to do multiple things on one hand before you cure. Sometimes it's better to do one thing at a time and work hand to hand. So it's really just about figuring out what works for you uh, individually as well as sort of what's going to work for the design. So with this particular element, them being smaller and I wanted them to have a really sharp shape, I made sure to cure after each of these diamonds. Same process in, in chroming the diamonds. I'm going to chrome them out and then before I wipe any of the excess chrome off, I'm going to take that top coat again and redefine that shape so that once that's cured, I can go ahead and wipe off the excess with my swipe and I don't have to worry about my chrome diamonds going anywhere. They're cured, they're locked in, they're nice and secure on the nail. So now that those are done, I'm going in with some white art gel. If you have one that doesn't have a dispersion layer, that would be great because aside from this white gel, the nail is totally done and you wouldn't have to go through and cover that up with top coat. I don't, this particular art gel cures with a tacky layer. So I did have to come back after and do, you know, the design over again in top coat and no wipe top coat, but um, that's not a problem. See, you can really make anything work. You don't have to have every single iteration of every single product to get things done. You just really gotta think through what your process is gonna be to make sure you can get the result that you ultimately want. So for the thumbs and the pinkies, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do and I ended up just doing a chrome ombre on a black nail to tie everything together. So again, these are already cured and I'm just taking that same applicator, same chrome dust, rubbing it part way down the nail and then I just get a little bit lighter with my touch as I go to sort of create that nice fade and those will just get top coated in glossy top coat at the end. So one last time going through and just shaping them up, making sure that my corners are straight and even. I did flip her hand around to look at it from her angle because sometimes what looks good with the hand down to you when you hold it up is all crooked. <laughs> so you gotta make sure you look at it from both angles to make sure you get a really nice shape. And um, I'm gonna give her a little bit of cuticle oil and some lotion and then I think we'll be done. Just trying to get a little bit of that chrome off of her skin. And a good tip on the cuticle oil is once you've done cuticle oil and you've lotioned your, your customer's hands or the person whose nails you're doing, have them go wash their hands and then come back and their skin will be nice and moisturized, but you won't have that messy cuticle oil sort of all over when you take pictures or videos. So that is the end of this look. This will take her straight through Christmas into the new year with some fancy fresh nails. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and we'll see you next time.